So I discovered the perfect ChatGPT marketing prompts that you are going to love. There's nine of them, let's get right into it. So the first one is a buyer persona. The prompt is this, I sell, insert your product or service, write a buyer persona for both male and female. Now the example that we're gonna be using is I sell blue light blocking glasses, write a buyer persona for both male and female. All right, let's put it into ChatGPT and get some outputs, right? So this is going to give us critical information that we are going to be able to use and get insight for to be able to craft our marketing message much more effectively. Most people don't even think about this when they are start marketing their products or their services. So look at all the in information that it gives us, right? The buyer persona is, oh, what do you know? Me, Michael, uh, age 28, single, uh, occupation, income, location. Do you see how valuable all of this information is, right? Background and challenges, their goals, their values, their buying motivation how important is that to know in your marketing, right? Objections and concerns. Then we have another buyer persona, a female side, okay? So this is demographics 32, married with a toddler, income 65,000, background and challenges, goals and values, buying motivation, objections and concerns. Do you see how all this can really increase your, uh, your overall revenue and your overall marketing efforts, okay? Number two is identifying the pain points. So the prompt is this, identify and list the pain points of my ideal customers for my insert your product. So the example I'm gonna be using is, I want to identify and list the pain points of my ideal customers for my standing desk business, okay? I own a standing desk, I love it. Uh, I bought it because I didn't want to be in pain. I didn't wanna be sitting down for so long. And here, knowing this information can be vital for your advertising, for your marketing messaging, for your email copy, for any kind of message that you're putting out there to your potential customers, okay? So we can speak directly to these pain points with our product, with our marketing, okay? See right here, it says physical discomforts, right? Back pain, neck pain, leg and foot, leg and foot discomfort, weight gain and metabolic health, decreased productivity, limited workspace flexibility, uh, ergonomic concerns, space constraints, right? All of these are so critical, okay? Budget and then cost issues. All right, next is number three, Benefits versus features. The sh the uh, the prompt is this: showcase the benefits and features of my product X, which does Y, to potential customers in a way that is clear and compelling. All right. So the example we're going to be using is a anti-aging cream, visibly young retinol cream. It reduces signs of aging to potential customers. Uh, we want the benefits and features in a way that's. Uh, clear and compelling, okay? So we're gonna put that in. You're just gonna insert your business or your product or your service, and you're gonna get those benefits and features. People buy the benefits. They buy what they're gonna get out of it, all right? The features are just an added uh, an added part of it, all right? But focus on the benefits. That is the most critical part. That's what's going to lead to sales and conversions. It's what's in it for me, okay? The features are great to have, but focus on the benefits in your marketing and your messaging, okay? Okay, so here it is, uh, youthful radiance, minimize fine lines, revitalize skin tone, improved uh, skin texture, deep hydration, boosted collagen production, enhanced protection. Do you see people would buy an anti-aging skincare cream based on that? All right, the features uh, are important, but they're not gonna buy because it's a premium grade retinol, no. They're not gonna buy because it has n uh, natural moisturizing agents, no. They're gonna buy for the benefits, but we still need to include the features in there. All right, and that's where this prompt is going to help you. All right, next one, number four, is your tone of voice. So the prompt is this, what tone of voice will deeply connect with my target audience who are actively seeking product or service X, whatever your product is, you just insert it. All right, so the example is this, what tone of voice will deeply connect with my target audience who are actively seeking a cream to effectively eliminate dark circles under their eyes, okay? So people are not thinking about the tone of voice in their marketing and their messaging and what they are putting out there for people to potentially buy and they are seeing, right? We want to connect on a deep level. Have you ever seen a piece of advertising or a piece of marketing or just a commercial where it's like, man, that speaks right to my core. That is exactly what I'm going through. That is exactly what uh, what I needed to hear, okay? That is what having the proper tone of voice can do for you, all right? And the proper marketing and messaging, right? Hitting on the pain points, the benefits, all of those things together really come together to just drive sales, drive conversions, okay? 
So here are uh, a bunch of different suggested uh, tone of voices that deeply connect with the target audience, empathetic and understanding. Then he even goes into giving a little bit more example of it, hopeful and reassuring, perfect, educational and an expert, authentic and genuine, inspiring and uplifting, personal and direct, perfect. Now we can use these tone of voices next with creating other types of content, other types of copywriting, other types of emails, other types of marketing. We can insert this into ChatGPT now that we know this. We can say, hey, write uh, an email subject line or an email that promotes my product in this specific tone of voice, right? You just need to enter your product or your service into that, okay? Next one is terminology, all right? What the prompt is this, what is some common terminology used in the blank industry. So the example is, what is some common terminology used in the golf industry? All right, we want to know the terms. We want to know what people are talking about. It's almost like uh, when you think about kids and they have a certain language, right? They speak in a way uh, using slang terms. I, I'm getting to the point where I don't even understand what kids are talking about anymore. But that terminology is what speaks to that age range, okay? So we need to speak to those, those potential customers with the specific terminology that ChatGPT is giving us, okay? So if we're selling golf coaching lessons or golf equipment or golf products, we need to add into these, into our sales pages, into our marketing, you know, what does it help with? Does it help with your tee, your fairway, your your greens, your, uh, you know, par, birdie, eagle? You know, we need to incorporate all of that into our marketing, okay? Next one is offer optimization. I love this one. So the prompt is this, I sell, and so your product or service, what can I do to make this offer better for my ideal customer? So the example I'm gonna be using is, I am a mobile dog groomer that comes to you to bathe your dog and cut their hair. What can I do to make my offer even better, okay? We want to optimize this offer to come up with some ideas that can really just blow up our sales. You know, make make it a no-brainer that, yeah, I'm going to, def as a customer, I'm definitely going to buy this, right? And that allows you to potentially raise your prices, make more profits, okay? So let's say I am a mobile dog groomer. Uh, here are some convenience factors, right? Flexible scheduling. Regular scheduled discounts, online booking, you know, a first time offer, puppy packages, senior dog care, education, right? Certificates and training, before and after photos, reviews, testimonials, uh, additional services, a mobile a boutique, health checks, right? Spa packages. The, this is just going to get your mind thinking of other ways that I can add value to my offer that will allow me to charge more and make more money, okay? So it's just going to keep going on and on, but you just need to insert in your product or your business. All right, we're at number seven, almost there to number nine. Seven is objections. The prompt is this, address potential objections that my customers may have about product X, whatever your product is, which provides why and provide compelling responses that overcome these objections. Okay, so the example I'm gonna be using is, uh, I have a spray tan business which helps people look and feel great without damaging their skin. And uh, we want to provide compelling responses to overcome these objections, okay? So you wanna know what is going to hold people back from giving you money, from giving you their credit card, right? What's stopping them? They might not even tell you, but you have to be aware of it before those objections even come up. And that's where this is going to really come in handy. When you study these objections, when you know the responses, you are go going to be able to handle those objections, overcome them, and eventually allow more money to come into your business because people are gonna be like, wow, I understand what he's talking about. I get that. You know, this isn't so much of an issue. I can do that, all right? It's going to lead to them giving you their credit card or money for your products or service. All right, real quick, these are going over a lot of objections, perfect. First one, I'm worried the tan will look too unnatural or, or orange. Perfect, I love it. That is a true objection. And then response, we our solution is specifically formulated to provide a natural and sun-kissed glow. We con we will consult with you to choose a perfect shade that complements your skin, skin tone, ensuring you get a beautiful and authentic looking tan. Do you see how powerful that is? And then it goes over all these objections that you can put into your marketing, into your messaging, to make sure that you get those sales. All right, number eight is effective advertising. So. The prompt is this, write a, insert your ad platform, maybe it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, that gets people to sign up for my 
enter your lead magnet or your offer and use the problem agitate solution framework. So this is if you're creating ads, you're driving people to a landing page, you're driving people to a sales page, you wanna use the problem agitate solution framework. This is a, a, a popular uh, copywriting framework that's proven to get sales. Problem agitate solution, okay? So the example is we are writing a Facebook ad that gets people to sign up for a 50% off an oil change. Use a problem agitate solution, write it in a friendly tone, all right? Again, going back to the tone, we wanna know what tone is going to connect with our customers on a deep level that once they read our ad, they're gonna be like, I want it, okay? So really quick, is your car thirsty? Problem, all right? We get it, oil changes are one of those, one of those later tasks easily forgotten until you notice your engine running rough or the dashboard light flashing at you. Agitate, neglecting, it can lead to bigger problems down the road. Dust and debris buildup, engine damage, reduced fuel efficiency, yikes. Solution, but here's some good news. Get ahead of the game and give your car the TLC it deserves. For a limited time, sign up and get a smooth running engine with 50% off your next oil change. Claim your discount now and drive away with peace of mind. Perfect, just put in your product or your service, your offer or your lead magnet. And finally, number nine is a sales page. So the prompt is this. Create a sales page for my product X that does Y. All right, we want to uh, use the problem agitate solution framework to craft a compelling message that drives conversions and persuades potential customers to take action. Okay, so the example that I'm gonna be using is uh, I have an online course that teaches people how to make money selling products on Amazon FBA. Use the problem agitate solution framework uh, to create a compelling message. Let's see what it spits out. And you just insert in your product and what it does, all right, that's really important. ChatGPT needs to understand what your product does, right? What solution it provides, okay? That's going to make it a lot more effective. Okay, so imagine we have a sales page, we have ClickFunnels up, we're ready to sell our course. What do we write on the sales page? Use this prompt, okay? Uh, are you missing out on the, on, on the gold rush of our age? Uh, problem, you've heard the success stories, everyday individuals turning into entrepreneurs overnight, leveraging the power of Amazon to build income streams that once thought they once thought was impossible. And then it goes on to agitate the problem itself. Solution, and here's what you will achieve with Amazon FBA Mastery, bonus, uh, and then more about testimonials. So that's going to spit out a really effective sales page that's going to give you really good copy. And I wanna also mention that you need to proofread this information before it just comes out. Don't just copy paste it without reading it. You need to know what it's actually saying and make sure it's accurate, okay? So these are nine ChatGPT marketing prompts that you are going to love and your business and your customers are going to love. All right, so I will leave all of these prompts uh, in the description below for you to check out, literally copy paste them, start using them today and just get the best results for your business. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you're gonna like these two videos also. Make sure to check them out. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.